take your container, put a, a good sized blob of um, blue tack in the bottom, glue the lid on, make a hole in the middle, pop that in, glue that around the base, around the base of the wire, thread all your beads on, add your trim. You, all you need to do with this um, is to glimmer mist it, add your trim and your pearly bits, thread your beads on last, either curl this over or add a Tim Holtz one to uh, this. So glue it on and then add one of those on and then slot your card in. Easy as that. Mine's not quite, it needs to be pinched together a bit, mine. But there you go, that's how you do them. So I hope that helps. Let me know if it helps, Joanne. And good luck with the wedding. Right, this uh, this next bit is for... Um, I'll right, I did a, a, an upload on the transferable pictures. And um, Dare to Be Me, yeah, Jill, <coughs> um, asked me about... Um, let me just see what she's saying now. She's saying that she's got beautiful uh, vintage images and she wants to try this technique. Um, and she didn't want to cut them out, obviously. Uh, and then maybe collage them or make ATCs. So you can't, it's really, really simple, really easy to do this. And um, so what I've just done is, um, <coughs> Jin has very, very kindly done me a fairy picture, and I'm going to show you it. I've printed it off on the wrong paper at the moment, so I'm not sure how much of that. She does digital images, so she's done this one for me, obviously, the fairy, the purple, the butterfly, and I didn't print it on the right resolution. But uh, So what I did do, I printed another copy off, which is here, uh, which is a better one, because I want this for a project on one of those, do you remember the uh, picture frames that I got at the car boot and the inset so I can, I want to do a picture but the <coughs> reason why I'm just showing you this now Jin is because um, what I did, I ran that big copy off obviously that was, I didn't do the right resolution then I rang, rang, ran the, a couple more copies off and one of them I did purposely to do this to show you since I read your email and what I've done is I've taken my cardstock and I just use when I've got it piece somewhere help the, I mean I do get it from a, ma a manufacturer of card but um, it's really it's like a soft touch to it but it's quite thick card uh, but it'll go on any card so what I did I glued the picture using the PV PV <laughs> using the tacky glue just simple tacky glue. I glued the paper, the card first. Use it with a brush. Good, you need a good leg because it's got to stick. And obviously it doesn't take long because I've just done this and she's only just uh, emailed this through to me. I've laid the picture on it. So you're taking your image. Where is my image? I have just had. See, I can't find anything. Here it is. I've done it on glossy paper, you know, on um, photographic paper, because you do get really good images on these. That's why your old pictures, your old vintage pictures, are really good for doing this. Turned it all the way around, put it on, used the brayer to uh, make it really nice and smooth, and you're getting all the image. And then let that dry, and it took 20 minutes. And then after that, I just used the sandpaper, scored it all over the pitch, you know, all over the back of the card and then wet it. Soak that for about five minutes. I did let it soak this time. But you do have to keep soaking it. <coughs> Excuse me, because, um, you know, there's still little bits in little areas that you can still get off. And all you do is just rub. You don't, don't rub hard. You only need to rub gentle. If it's soaked properly, you don't need to rub hard at all. And you're just rubbing your hands over it and getting the excess. I can still feel some underneath, so I'm just taking that off. What you have to be careful of is when you do get down to the very last layer that's on top of the image, you need to be really careful you don't start rubbing that off. And it, it can happen, and it does happen. But uh, that, to me, that's if you lose a little bit, it adds to the, the picture anyway. So I'm just finishing that off. And now I can use that as, cut that as an ATC uh, and decorate it, or I can add it to a journal. And there you go, that's what you've got. So that's how you do it. So thank you very much for doing the pitch for me in the first place. <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. 
um, and I hope you lot try this. Use your vintage pictures, your photographs. I mean, obviously you don't want to waste them, but if you're going to use, make a journal and you want to keep them in there, um, in a project, then you can do this, and it's it's brilliant. And you don't need all them chemicals. I don't know where they say you do. You don't. You might need to treat it afterwards to protect it, but mod podge it. Um, you know, put a varnish over it or whatever. But you don't need to do it while you're doing these projects at all. But then the professionals might say you do. Well, I haven't. <laughs> so there you go. I just want to show you what happens when you dry it. Okay? Now, it, when you dry it, your image is very, very faint, and that is why you need to coat it afterwards. Um, and just mod podge it or varnish it or whatever. I'm just going to show you this, because I, I'm, I'm not bothered about this myself. Okay. So as soon as you wet it again, and I'm using glue just as a, a sheen over it, your picture will return. If you wet it with water your picture will return but then like I say you must dry it and then coat it with something to protect it alright so I just thought I'll let you know that I'm just washing my hands that glue's everywhere um, and that's it that's that's how you do it so you do need to that's why it goes like this you do need to give it a coat of something to bring the colour back out but don't do that until it's dry. Okay? See you later.